Hello again from Ski Instructor Academy and welcome to another vlog where we today are talking about the strand of bumps. One of the most challenging things I think we find when people come on exams is when we ask them what they're nervous about going into their international level three, for example. Normally, most people say the bumps, yeah, doing moguls. Yeah, and I think if somebody is a, a, a good bump skier, he's generally a very good piece skier or has the ability then to get all that movement and everything that he's got going on the bumps and bring it to a really strong dynamic turn on the yeah, hill, on the absolutely. piece as well. I think it would be a great advantage if everybody's looked over the vlog before this where you look at equipment and me talking about um, boots, boot setup and alignment, etc. It'll help for this video as well. So what we're going to do is dive straight in. We're looking at um, a classic movement pattern here from Jamie where he is doing the dolphin turn exercise that I'm sure many of you understand what it is. If I slow it right down, you can see how the fulcrum point changes from the rear of the ski quickly to the middle and then to the front. And you can see in this ski, I think you're on a Fisher Fizz. Yeah, Fizz Fisher SL165. Um, yeah, stiff ski. Very stiff ski. Um, and you can see when the tip engages here and he puts pressure through the tip, there's not really much going on because the skis are, are torsionally very, very stiff as well, aren't they? Great on ice. Yeah, awesome ski on the piste, awesome ski for edge to edge carving, all that kind of thing. But, you know, it's 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 not the most bendy ski at times. No. Whereas I was on a different ski here. You were testing for Falkel, right? You were yeah, on the, the Falkel Works. I think it was a V-Works or something. Yeah. All mountain ski, but yet orientated more towards piece to 74 and a foot. Um, Cause this Look seems to be very relevant there. right yeah. now as to what people are skiing on when they're doing different things. But we yeah. just see a lot more bend from the ski in this video. So that's obviously that ski's absorbing some of your impact with the snow, some of the landing. So therefore for me, Personally, I think if the equipment's flexing, then you don't have to flex as, as much. much. Yeah, I mean, look um, at that. Because there's you some suspension within the ski there. <laughs> you can see how the ski here and this turn particularly, um, how it reacts to the snow. And Jimmy's right. I mean, that's the first point of absorption now. And you can see that I'm trying to get some plant deflection. And at this stage here, that ski is going to make life much easier in the bumps than, than than the ski you're on, for example. And you're seeing you're trying to get some plantar flexion here, Paul. Would you be thinking about pushing the tip down, or are you thinking about pulling the tip back, uh, pulling the ski back in this drill? <laughs> yeah, it's um, the chicken and the egg question, isn't it? So yeah, um, from a mechanics point of view, um, when this was brought up from my coaches a lot, where you'd have coaches saying, you know, push the tips down as you drop into the, the dip of a, of a mogul field. Yeah, the trough. The trough, yeah. It's it's not mechanically possible to make that action in a ski boot. Yep. Um, therefore, it requires you to have a dominance maybe more higher up the kinetic chain with this pushing, pulling action or the hip to be introduced as well. We'll come on to that. But that's a good question. So fore and aft, you basically. Fore and aft, yeah. But how you achieve the fore and aft becomes a problem because one's trying to create a different lever than the other one. So we'll have a look so at that's that. That's above my pay grade. Yeah. Now, we are going to look at, um, first of all, some of the trainers going through um, some rut lines. Now, in these videos here, we've opted to show you generally rut lines, which are more challenging, That's we would zipper say. zipper lines for the American market, I believe, or the, yeah, the NZ or whatever the, the Australians thinking. Once again, if we look at the video, we see the dolphin turn. And now um, I try to bring that in to the bumps to try and demonstrate to the the clients how that movement pattern is very appropriate in the the bumps field as well um so we see again a similar movement pattern here where i'm exaggerating by the way i don't ski bumps normally like this and um, but i want to really exaggerate the idea of the movement pattern in fact if we go to someone like let's not look at me going slowly but let's look at gunther go down here where he is at normal speed we'll look at this you see him really doing that type of action especially from behind jamie as he goes past us so we see him making that action yeah i mean you just see Everything's coming from the ground. Everything's coming from the feet. There's a strong fore aft. You're seeing a solid push pull of the feet within the turn. It just basically looks like he's doing a short turn. 
in the bumps and these are icy bumps these i mean this icy, wasn't yeah. a nice a nice line and you know the camera doesn't give it justice really it was a icy pitch steep pitch yeah. deep so bumps if we look at if we look at this case nice. here we can see at this point here in the bumps we see the action here whoop go a bit slower let's go down to one eighth and now we see how he is using tail and tip to see the shovel going down at the initiation it's real nice and here i want to really point out again his ability as the bump drops away is how he is able as the bump's dropping away to be able to move onto the edges of the skis as well because let's face it them edges are going to have grip and this is where we can discuss as well there are many different ways to ski bumps and i'm not talking about choice of line for example which can be quite obvious whereas in our case in a rut line there is no choice of line you're in there and you just get on with it yep. um but there is a different way of skiing them in the sense of what we might call first and shoops in, in austrian where the, the heel push yeah like a heel thing. pushing um, and you see it a lot in um, when the because we obviously over have steer on the heel rather than heel pushing. Yeah, over steering of the heel. It's it, you see it a lot because we have the world class mogul runners up there who who go down the moguls and do a couple of jumps and spins and whatever and land and they're, they're phenomenal. But actually, their methodology behind skiing bumps is a bit different to maybe how you're going to ski a mogul field. So don't always just look at what they're doing although obviously these are the guys at the top but it's it is a bit different when you're on a normal setup a normal recreational ski and boot etc yeah and what i like when you watch gunny come down is it's just how still the body is and that that for me is everything i know last time we're talking about trying to ski from the ground up over and um, bumps might be slightly different i'm always trying to ski with the feet but i'm trying to be very very still in the body so i've got access to my feet if my body's coming off its axis i need to then reset the body before i've got access to the legs for steering and absorption just to quickly say about gunny as well is he's a he's a racer or former racer a long time ago he's 54 and he's got a, a 125 pole on so his yeah, arms yeah, yeah. can look a little funky but he likes to ski with a longer pole for when he's obviously on the piece for a solid push off in the gates <laughs> yeah still I, I, competitive I, I, pole, pole length is a, is a quite interesting when you see how i know jamie and i ski with relatively short poles because you know from my side i'm not the best of skiers i'm quite short so, um i find for my type and style of skiing a short pole but obviously this long pole can can create this look um that people can focus in on and it's worth mentioning that a lot of ski instructors do over focus on the arms and the hands what they're doing and in fairness in bumps it is essential to have discipline there However, there's a lot of things happening between my ski and my feet before I reach my arms that you might want to pay attention to than somebody's little bit of a funky arm movement. It's, it's not a race from A to B. You know, when you watch Gun, Gunny Ski here, he had a more advanced group, and you can clearly see the dynamics now compared with what Jamie was demonstrating with his group. It's appropriate for his group because he had a relatively strong team that was skiing with him so and again we can look at another trainer here look at the difference in the style again a phenomenal slalom racer um former and, austria team member yeah and he skis the bumps differently no doubt about it but you know, he almost equally, brings the, the the virtual bump that transition that he would have in a race turn you can yeah, really see it you can really see it in his in his in his rut lines whereas when we look at gunther there was it's a little bit different as to how he works his way down the slope and guys remember it's you know it's it's a it's a um, angle terrain of about a red run they're getting relatively uh, deep now but also all the guys because it seems so relevant in this day and age skis a ski all the guys run 30 meter gs skis yeah yeah and here we see another trainer um again skiing them differently again this is martin looking silky smooth very clear with the mechanics of how he is using the ski fore and aft we can see it on several turns here how he is now using the tail of the ski and very quickly he manipulates the ski forward now hang on let's just go back a little bit because i want to see this point here just looks tasty right just looks he's putting a little sauce on it for his clients now ah here's there we uh, go. 
He has Franzi again. And again, you could pick up on the pole plant if you want to be a little bit critical, but he, he's a racer, so he's on. A, he's got a long pole as well. Use long poles, he usually yeah. uses about 125 as well, and he's about 5 foot 10, so about 178. So again, I've got the more beginner group, so I'm trying to demo at a little bit of a lower level. But the train might be getting a little bit too high, deep and steep, maybe. So it gives you a little bit of a perspective of seeing how some of the trainers work. And, and in my case here, my job was to ski down to the group and show them that you can ski slowly as well. And this is the issue because most of them are looking for speed control. And we know that that's a problem actually in a rut line particularly because you're, you're sort of trapped in it. And speed is, it is your friend in a way, but not to everybody. When you see some of the skiers come down, the, the, the students come down, you clearly see they're nervous and they're, they're looking for speed control. And to demonstrate that it is possible to ski with speed control, you can go down very slowly if you have snow contact yeah, and you're I mean, absorbing the terrain. This clip is in slow motion, just so you know yeah, he's sorry. not skiing that slow. No, but let's go normal speed. Um, yeah, a lot of the clients, especially the guys who are coming in um, at a little bit of an older age, um, they're maybe a little bit more nervous about it. And that's what, obviously we're always searching for control, um, but the younger lads are kind of happy to take a fall, let the ski run away from them, make those physical mistakes with the potential of, you know, having a stack, having a fall. Whereas the older guys generally don't want to have that kind of, no. you know, don't want to don't injure themselves potentially. Um, so they're not quite as willing to, to be as gun-ho about it. To throw themselves into it. No, yeah. absolutely. So, absolutely um, not. And that is that is obviously an issue of, of confidence. Um, let's have a look. One more trainer. Go down, Vauta. And again, he's actually he's got a backpack on because <laughs> he's doing off-piste as got well. got some crampons and ice Sorry. axes probably in there. <laughs> ropes, known about A couple of stones. And you see the group now starting to go behind him. And now we can sort of have a look at the, the strengths and weaknesses of, of some of the, the groups as well. 